I love this man and I don't want to get a divorce, but lately he wants to turn me into some kind of step for wife, like a robot. I'm just like, you cannot set an impossible standard because she will never meet those expectations. He had two babies during our marriage. You need to stop having children until you learn how to be a responsible adult. And I hear him talking about, my wife wasn't nothing before I met her. Don't get me twisted, because I don't need you. Sometimes the biggest takeaway is the lesson that you learn. Here is today's case. What happens when one person isn't pulling their weight in the relationship because of their addiction? This couple is in dire need of help if their relationship is to be saved. Will he have the willpower to change? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, as you know, we have a virtual audience and it's filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Allison from Washington, D.C. Allison, welcome to Divorce Court. We're very happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of King versus King. Thank you, Honor. Ms. Dominique King. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought your husband, Mr. Sylvester King. Yes, Your Honor. To divorce court today. I understand the two of you have been married for eight years. Yes, Your Honor. But you are having some serious issues. Yes, yes Your Honor. And at this point, you are making a determination whether you should continue to stay married or separate and get a divorce. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll start with you, Ms. King. Why don't you give me some background and tell me how you ended up here in divorce court? Well, Jan, I'm here today because my husband, Sylvester, is a severe alcoholic. He drinks from the time he wakes up to the time he passes out at night. Hmm. It's not only affecting our relationship, it's also affecting his health. So, you say that's the main issue? Yes, the main issue. Severe alcoholism. What mm -hmm. do you have to say about that, sir? Well, Your Honor, I don't think my drinking is a problem because I was drinking before I got with her. I was also drinking at the beginning of our relationship and the beginning of our marriage. Mm -hmm. She chose to stop drinking. And I, and I didn't, so I don't see what's the issue with me drinking. But I think the question is, are, are you an alcoholic? Do you have a problem? No, I don't. You yes, don't? Yes, you do. So you feel like you could stop at any time, Mr. King? No, I can't, because my mm -hmm. body is dependent on it, so I, I can't. Okay, so then you have a problem? Yes. Okay. So how has this impacted your marriage? He gets drunk, and then he forgets a lot of things, but he also wrecked my car, Your Honor. Mm. He calls me, babe, please don't be mad at me. Um, I know you're probably gonna leave me, but can you come outside? I come outside and my car is parked in the driveway looking mm -hmm. like, uh, like it came from the junkyard. Mm -hmm. Windshield busted in, airbags deployed, the tires is on rims. I don't even know how he made it home, Your Honor, mm -hmm. to be honest. I don't even know what he hit. Like, so he I... was drinking and driving? Yes. And how often have you been doing that? Uh, maybe two or three times. Two or three times a what? A what? Two or three times, period. Two or three times you've been drinking and driving. What happened with the accident? How did you have the accident? That I don't remember, Your Honor. Because you were so drunk? Yes. So not only should you be grateful that you're even here today, but also that you haven't killed anyone. Yep. True indeed, Your Honor. And, you know, Juan, we've had a number of these cases over the years, drunk driving cases, where people are, are hit um, unbeknownst to them because there's somebody else on the road driving impaired and they shouldn't be. Let me tell you about the other time that he was drinking and driving. I worked overnights at the time, so he was supposed to pick me up from work. He stayed up all night drinking so that he stopped, I guess, at a red light stop sign. I don't know, because I wasn't there. But he fell asleep in the car, like passed out in the car. I had to call a family member to go look for him, and he told me that he fell asleep because he was drunk. I worked quite a ways away, so I had no way of getting home other than depending on my husband to come pick me up from work. Well, I don't know if you should be depending on him to drive mm -hmm. you anywhere. Yeah, see, he morning. wasn't supposed to be drinking that early in the morning, Your Honor. Like, you know you have to pick me up in the in morning. You should oh, yeah, not I'm be mad, drinking. May I put in on this, please? Mm -hmm. I already knew I was intoxicated, mm -hmm. so I, instead of me driving intoxicated, I pulled over to the side of the road and decided to take But you could have called me and that. told me to get a ride home. Like, don't just have me stuck at work waiting on you to come get me. So you got in the car knowing that mm -hmm. you were intoxicated again, but, so I decided but you not want, to drive but you want, at that you want me to time. credit you mm -hmm. with being responsible in the middle of you driving somewhere because you pulled over to the side yeah, of the road and passed out of That's not the only time. But you understand that that is still completely irresponsible, correct, sir? Yes, it was you still do irresponsible, that? but at the same time, I was still trying to help her. So, and you said you've only done this two or three times, and we've now 
learned about two of them in court And today. I'm about to tell you about the third. <laughs> what is the third, ma'am? <laughs> the third one was, like I said, it was, this one was kind of early on in our, our marriage, but my daughter had to use a restroom in the middle of the night. So she comes knocking on the door and tells me, Mommy, I have to use the bathroom, but she can't get in because he's passed out on the threshold of the bathroom in the hallway. It took me and my brother like 20 minutes to get him away from the bathroom so she can go use the bathroom. We only had one restroom in the house at the time. And this is a photo you submitted to court? No, that photo is from his, the night of our bachelor, um, our bachelor slash bachelorette party. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to go out to the club with his boys. They brought him back like that because they said that he fell asleep with one foot inside the car and one foot outside the car when they got to the club. So they brought him back and that's where he laid. How much do you drink every day? That I'm not sure of, Your Honor. What time do you start? That I'm not sure of as well. Do you work? I used to. So you start in the morning when you wake up? Majority, yes. And you drink all day? Sorry. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Mm. You drink until you fall asleep? No. Yes, you do. No, I don't. So I'm gonna tell you something, Mr. King, having had DUI cases before when I was a prosecutor in New York. When we stop people and they're arrested for driving under the influence, that's just the time that they got caught. They've done it many other occasions where they haven't. And they continue to drive because they haven't been caught yet. So you said it's only happened two or three times that yes, you've gotten behind the wheel, and, yes, and I, I and I happen to know but, now in court of two of them. Yes, I think you probably I think you do it regularly. He drinks from like 7:30 in the morning until whenever he comes home and goes to sleep at night. Do you remember the last day you went without a drink? Wednesday. Have you had a drink today? No. Would you be willing to take a breathalyzer test here in court? Yes. What is he reading one? You were drinking initially with yes, him. Yes. Did you, and you you stopped drinking? Yes. It wasn't the lifestyle I wanted to live anymore. I wanted to explore our relationship without alcohol. And when was that? That was like, we was together probably two years. When so I it's been six drinking. years? Yes. You, you haven't been drinking in six years? Not that I haven't had a drink, but haven't been drinking in excess and partying, yes. I understand. Good for you. Thank you. But he, like, he said that he doesn't drink from the time he gets up. He drinks from, like, 7.30 in the morning until whenever he comes home and goes to sleep at night. So I don't understand how he say he, did, he don't pass out. Like, you come home, and I argue with you many a times because you come home and don't have time for me because you come home, eat, and go to sleep. Do you remember the last day you went without a drink? Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday of this past week? Yes. All day, no drinking? Yes. You only did that because we was Did you have here. anything to drink today? No. Okay. You said there are other issues. I understand that this has been a major issue for yes. you in, in the marriage, but you said there have been other issues with trust and infidelity. Yes. Tell me about that. Um, last year, we got into a fight. I asked him to leave. It was only supposed to be for the night. He was gone for like a week or two. Hmm. He um, cheated on me within that week or two, and he claims that we were separated. Your Honor, we did not go file for separation. We did not file for a divorce. We're still technically married, so you shouldn't have been out sleeping with nobody else. How do you find I out about this? I found out because after we got done having sex, after, first of all, he lied to me and told me that he didn't have sex with anybody else within that time. Hmm. When he came back, he got a text that said, um, are you um, man enough to help me pay for a morning after pill since we both created this? That's how I found out that he had sex with somebody else, Your Honor. You happened to see that in a text yes. message on his yes. phone? Yes, on his phone, yes, Your Honor. Were you, were you looking through his phone? Yes. Or you just yes. happened to yes. see it? Well, the it, a text went off, and so I grabbed it and looked through it. I paid a bill, so why not look through his phone? So what happened, sir? I told her, once you put me out again, I wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. I already had it set in my mind, mm -hmm. I wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. But you so always come I, back. Once I left, I left, and then I went and found another residence. I was staying <laughs> with lying. my mother in He's various lying, houses Honor. at the time. I was going house to house. Okay. So then I got up with the old friend. Me and her had intercourse, and then afterwards she was calling me, begging me to come back home because mm. she wanted to work it out. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Well, I agree with that. I never even took my ring off. Okay. So, so you in had your mind, with somebody else, while you had the ring on, ma'am. And so in your mind, you're saying you left, you weren't coming back, and you weren't planning to reconcile. No, I wasn't. Okay. Did you call him and ask him to come back? 
I called him and asked him, was he coming back home? And he said yes. I asked him, well, before you come back home, did you have sex with anybody else? He told me no. I said yes. No, you didn't. You're a lie. You told me no. I, I said found out. yes. So why did we get in an argument when I seen that text that you had sex because with somebody else? Because you went through my phone. Why did I go through your phone? Okay, Miss King, I've, I've heard enough. It happened. Even after you found out, though, you decided you were still going to move forward and continue to try to make the marriage work, right? Yes, because I love him. So that's why we're here today. Are you going to continue to try to work through this marriage? I don't know what to say because I don't want to lose him, but I don't want to lose him to alcohol either. Well, right now, Miss King, he's choosing the addiction. I implore you that at some point, in order for you to live, you're going to have to do something different with your life. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free, 1-877-311-2222, or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I'm trying to understand from you, Mr. King, if you're ready for help. Because it sounds like all of the issues that you've had in your marriage and in your relationship, they stem from one thing, and that is your drinking problem. Your a, a drinking problem that you really don't acknowledge. Your yet. Honor, mm -hmm. everyone else says I have a drinking problem. I don't listen to everyone else. I listen to my doctors. Mm. At first, my doctors were telling me if I do stop, mm -hmm. I was gonna die. So then afterwards, they were saying if I don't stop, I was gonna die. So I said, well, if I'm gonna die regardless, I might as well go out and have fun doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying your doctors are telling yes. you. That they've told you contradictory information so that you that now you're at a point where you have to drink to live. That's what yes. they're telling you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, I, I have a place. professional that I've asked to come and listen to the testimony here in court. His name is Avalash Pulikin. He's a licensed counselor with over 10 years of experience in substance abuse, addiction, and socioeconomic inequities. Juan, will you, would you bring in the witness? Mm -hmm. Right this way, Mr. Pulikin, thank you for being here with us today. Thank have you, you me on. Have you had the opportunity to hear the testimony from Mr. and Mrs. King? I have. I would like for you to address uh, some of the things that you've heard in court today, Mr. Pulikin, and I'll give us some of your expertise. Absolutely, I'd be happy to. So, Mr. King, in addition to uh, hearing everything that you've said today, I also took the time to read your packet uh, where you talked about your struggles in depth. And you've mentioned that you drink in order to treat your depression. You drink in order to treat your pain. Your alcohol has become your medication. The thing that I want to say about alcohol, though, Mr. King, is that drinking alcohol to treat a serious mental health condition is like taking a loan from a loan shark when you're behind on your bills. You will get what you need in the short term, but in the long term, alcohol does so much that worsens your depression. It's a medicine that's slowly killing you. I do believe that there is a point to where your body becomes dependent on alcohol and stopping your use cold turkey could be dangerous. In regards to that, there are several qualified detox programs that will slowly help you wean yourself off alcohol. So if you truly are interested in making a change, and I recommend that you do because it's taking a toll on you, I'd recommend that you seek out the help that will slowly but surely help you make the difference that your life needs. Thank you, Mr. Pulikin. That was very helpful. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. And I want to follow up on a, a couple of things that he said. Um, you say you have, have you had a drink today? No. Would you be willing to take a breathalyzer test here in court? Yes. Okay, Juan, would you get the breathalyzer, please? Absolutely. When I advise you, you're gonna blow until I tell you to stop, okay? Go ahead. Keep going. You can stop. What is it reading, Juan? Point one two. He's been drinking. From yesterday. Okay, so you blew a point one two. You've been drinking. Juan, why don't you explain, as your position, having administered hundreds of these tests, what blowing a one two means? Yes, ma'am. Mr. King, to put things into context, the legal limit for driving is point zero eight you blew a .12, that is well over the legal limit. There's no way we could have gotten that reading 
from yesterday. Thank you, Juan. Mm -hmm. What do you have to, to say? To address what he said about his doctor telling him that, I go so all his appointments. His doctor never once told him he had to drink to live. Mm -hmm. I asked him to quit. He tried to quit cold turkey. He started having seizures. Mm -hmm. So then when we went to the doctor, they told him that he needed to quit the right way, which would be taking medication or going into inpatient to quit so that they can help him. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I, I go saw your appointments. And I, I understand, I understand, and I understand what Mr. Abelash said today about the makeup of your body, your body dynamic changing because of all the alcohol over the years and how quitting cold turkey could be problematic for you. But it's also why I reached out to an alcohol rehab program before you came to court today, sir. And I think it's clear to anyone listening and, and hopefully that it's clear to you that you can't do this on your own. No one, there's not a single one of us that actually makes it on our own throughout life. When we have challenges, we have problems, we all need help. I reached out to ABC New Directions Outpatient Addiction Treatment Clinic. They provide drug and alcohol assessment and they will do that for you to determine the severity of your alcohol use. Once that is determined, they will help admit you into an appropriate program if you are willing to do that, sir. So my question to you today is, are you ready to get this help that the court is offering to provide you? Your Honor, I would greatly appreciate it, but honestly, I'm not ready for it yet. Okay. Mr. King has said he's not ready. So now you have something you have to think about in terms of are you going to continue to try to work through this marriage, being married to your husband who is not ready to go into rehab knowing that he has an alcohol addiction? What do you have to say about that, ma'am? I don't know what to say because I don't want to lose him, but I don't want to lose him to alcohol either. I want him to finally be ready to make that change, not just for me and our family, but for him. Mm -hmm. Like, we're trying to have a baby. We can't have a baby if he's drunk all the time. Mm -hmm. It's always like, my fault, once again. The You're doctor right, you told can't. him this. Like, I can't, I can't keep doing it. It's taking an emotional toll on me as well. Like, I want my husband back. The husband that was there in the beginning and not always <laughs> drunk. Always like, my mm -hmm. fault. Mm -hmm. I don't... <sighs> I don't see how he not seeing that it is his fault because he made a choice to continue to drink. Mm -hmm. Like, just like I made a choice to stop, he can make that choice. Mm -hmm. If he really want our marriage to work, then he would get ready and take the help that you're offering him today. Well, right now, Ms. King, he's choosing the addiction, unfortunately, over your marriage. Yes, unfortunately. And a lot of alcoholics do, Mr. King. My heart goes out to you because I know how hard this is. You're not ready, but I implore you that at some point, in order for you to live, mm -hmm. you're going to have to do something different with your life. And not what? just for you. You have children, you have people around you who love and care for you, sir. My hope is that by the time you're ready, it's not too late for you. Mm -hmm. Ms. King, I would like for you to stay after court today. I have Mr. Pullican on standby. I would like for him to speak to both of you together and also individually. Okay, thank Good you, luck to Your Honor. <clears throat> When my husband said that he's choosing his addiction over our marriage, it hurt. Like, I really thought that he would choose me over drinking. One, I'm not ready, and two, it is what it is. At this point, I don't know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna have to go back and talk about this, and maybe I can encourage him to get the help that he needs. I'm tired of the controlling this. I'm not controlling you, I'm trying to help you. I don't wanna see you sit here and drink yourself to death. I told you that over and over again. Yeah, that's what you always say. It's over, I'll pack my stuff up when I get home. <laughs>